Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Coronavirus Conspiracies. As we continue to prepare for and to recover from the first wave of COVID-19 crashing upon our American shores, I am now struck by the various conspiracy theories that are gaining resonance and momentum outside much of the mainstream media. In a previous Human Meme podcast, we discussed how perfect this novel coronavirus is, and how perfectly designed it is at killing people, and while COVID-19 leapt from animal to human without a doubt, it may, it may just have also been perfected in a lab somewhere as a bioweapon. And to back up that theory, there are now reports of a strange pneumonia reported in China as early as November 2019, killing people, people who were struck down who just happened to work in a bio lab near the Wuhan wet market, struck down mysteriously. Was that the event of the beginning of our end? We now know that the first American infection of COVID-19 happened in January 2020, and the DNA of that virus was discovered to be European-based and not from China. Oh, how the plot thickens. With simple facts. Disinformation is everywhere. First, coronavirus was not a pandemic. Then it was. Then COVID-19 was a Democrat hoax. Then it wasn't. Then closing borders was not a solution. Now it is. Oh, and wearing a mask doesn't help either. Until it did. And now we wear masks. We were told COVID-19 was not transmitted through the air just direct droplets only. Well, now you can catch coronavirus from the air around you, 13 to 17 feet away from you, three hours after the original carrier poisoned the air. If we cannot believe our truth-tellers, then who and what and where are we to believe? That's how a good conspiracy theory rises inside a vacuum with its own invented lies and truths. Now I'm going to share with you a wild story printed in the Los Angeles Times newspaper about FEMA going into the state and stealing PPE and other supplies that the states bought on their own dime the federal government confiscating personal protection equipment? Although President Trump has directed states and hospitals to secure what supplies they can, the federal government is quietly seizing orders, leaving medical providers across the country in the dark about where the material is going and how they can get what they need to deal with the coronavirus pandemic. Hospital and clinic officials in seven states described the seizures in interviews over the past week. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, is not publicly reporting the acquisitions despite the outlay of millions of dollars of taxpayer money, nor has the administration detailed how it decides which supplies to seize and where to reroute them. Officials who've had materials seized also say they've received no guidance from the government about how or if or will they will get access to the supplies they ordered. That has stoked concerns about how public funds are being spent and whether the Trump administration is fairly distributing scarce medical supplies. Now, my human meme friend, that's kind of a wild story. And you're starting now to hear it over the past day or so, emerging from other sources. The feds are taking from the states and giving to other states? For what reason? 
Some think FEMA is building their stockpile on the backs of the states. But then what? Why? They believe FEMA is redistributing that stolen, confiscated stockpile back to some states. Well, which states? Are the feds taking from the blue states to give to the red states to help in a presidential re-election bid? Is this an effort to punish purple states, red states turning blue? By trying to punish these purple target areas within states that just happen to have high concentrations of minorities in order to repress their votes by killing them, withholding medical supplies, removing voters by denying their states proper protection from the coronavirus that they had already purchased? And sure, these are all paranoid questions, right? Being asked online and in podcasts and in other lonesome places. And I'll let you decide if any of those theories deserve your merit and attention. But first, here's another curious conspiracy theory. A theory about inflated billing and surprise invoices and emergency department doctors. And this theory is pretty solid in fact and truth because you can easily track back to the origins of the deception. Big money denying your health care and converting your health into their carrier bonds. One ER doctor was actually fired for speaking out about this abysmal truth hiding in the daylight. Here's the quotes from Salon.com. About a third of hospital emergency rooms are staffed by doctors on the payrolls of two physician staffing companies, Team Health and Envision Health, owned by Wall Street investment firms. Envision Healthcare employs 69,000 healthcare workers nationwide, while Team Health employs 20,000. Private equity firm Blackstone Group owns Team Health. KKR owns Envision. Care of the sick is not the mission of these companies. Their mission is to make outsized profits for the private equity firms and its investors. Overcharging patients and insurance companies for providing urgent and desperately needed emergency medical care is bad enough, but it is unconscionable to muzzle doctors who speak out to advocate for the health of their patients and co-workers during the global pandemic that is rapidly spreading across the United States. And here's a... Uh Another nutty thing, and that is this, the fact that a famous female comedian believes COVID-19 is an invention of the Democrats to discredit Trump because they couldn't impeach him. And the trick of her spinning is that COVID-19 is out to kill older voters who happen to love Trump. And all of that is claimed with a straight face in spite of the GOP's point of view that older people will happily die of coronavirus so the young can go back to work. And tell me one more time, which political party again loves death panels? Oh, and there are many more coronavirus conspiracy theories out there, my friend, my human meme friend, and yes, they do concern me because people often choose to know only what they wish to remember. Facts do not matter. Truth is irrelevant. And we are now moving into the moment of the gut feeling and the immutable intuition. Why learn and know when we are born with every decision-making tool we could ever need? given unto us by God and the fairy godmother and the boogeyman living under the bed. Well, my final hope today is that in this ongoing, sorrowful, bleeding aftermath of COVID-19, my hope is that our country will once again become science-based 
and that we will together make a return to the idea of preventative medicine. And that means healing essences and anti-vaxxers and all the other snake oil scams will need to fade into irrelevance because they didn't save us then and they shall not save us now. Only the scientific method matters. Only proper data studies matter. Only informed thinking matters. We need to trust mathematics again. We need to believe in doctors again. And we need to embrace the science that saves us from the plagues all over again. Yes, we are born to be what we were not meant to be. We are born to become what cannot be denied through blind faith and suspect belief. But our confirmation of knowing is really only confirmed by wisdom and thinking and rationalization. And in the revolution of thought, wielded against every oppressor and viral threat. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.